All right, guys. You guys want to blow up your back? Sorry, blow my back up. You want a mass building back workout? Try this. You want bulging lats? You want Tyrannosaurus tra traps? You guys want lats like Dorian Yates? With half the work and half fucking genetics? You want to figure out how to not work hard, get big? You want, this is the shortcut channel. Don't get this on camera. Don't get that on camera. Okay, I'll tell you that after. We'll talk shit after. Remember, always talk like you're going to be disposed, deposed in 10 years. Like a lawyer is gonna ask you, why did you say that? Who were you talking about? Got that from Derek Fay. Never speak in absolutes. Red flag time. I don't do dumbbell rows that often, especially at this gym, because there's literally no fucking point, because there's a million great row machines in here. Why the fuck do I need to do dumbbell rows? But for everyone who doesn't have access to great back equipment, you should be dumbbell rowing. Just a fucking staple of like what you're doing, right? We're lucky enough here to be living this vanity life where we, we have row machines. But anyway, so like I've said before, when it comes to rowing, I've had people set up here. You put weight into the bench, you rock through, you pull. So I'm always rocking through things. My head's pressed back, my chin's down, but my shoulder is able to move. So I'm rocking, rocking. There's any number of ways I can do it. I can stagger my stance, I can rock here. I can, I can do anything I want. As long as I keep this body back and I'm having this feeling of like sitting back into, th into hip here and moving through hip as I pull. Allowing shoulder to roll, roll. So I'm not doing this. It's not what I want. I don't want to be sawing wood in midair. So I saw, let's just say, a reputable individual in the industry demonstrating this where this individual was holding this position, which is a good starting position. It's good. We're good so far. So far, so good. Then it turned into this. So my lat, the outside of the lat, my lat literally just cramped because it pulled too hard, right? There's no movement in it. It's like me taking my a heavy, a heavy weight on the cable and just going, and like my biceps like, yeah, it's working, but it fucking hurts. It doesn't feel good. I'm not able to lengthen and retract, right? So just be understand, boys and girls, if you see this setup, this is fine. And if I'm looking up, it's like I'm looking up through the brim of a hat. So if I had a hat on, I just want to lift my hat up, my head up enough just to see myself in the mirror, see this bench. I don't want to be here. I just want to create enough tension upward so that I'm looking at that I can move forward when I pull instead of going right so if you get this person doing this and teaching you this immediately turn off the video and don't watch it just be done with the video they don't they don't have your best interest in mind that's a horrible instruction it's horrible to be this rigid and this would explain why this individual has no back to speak of and when they like in general so if I don't get length here, and if I don't adjust shoulders, so if I'm here, shoulders straight, and I'm doing this pull here, nothing's happening. If I don't shift shoulders, rock shoulder down, lock into lat here, so I'm locked into lat here, shoulder depressed back, and rock. Lat never goes out till here. I can't grab. If I stand here, this never happens. Look how much length I have here to here. Right? Lat is about length. You guys are only letting out, it's like I'm letting out from a flat back and I'm just letting my arm go out. And I think, no, oh, this is as far as I can reach. It's like, well, Laura, pass me my drink. Pass me my drink. Here, give it to me. Or pass it to me again. <laughs> and I can literally go, thanks. Right, it's the same fucking thing. Why would I grab stuff like, oh, no, sorry. I got, you thank go. you, thank you very much. Like, alligator arms, I don't. My back doesn't move. If your back never moves, it can't work, guys and girls. So this rigid like arm pulls, oh, I'm locked on my lat. No, you're not, guys. Your lat is not like an individual piece that is not attached to other things. In order for it to open, other things have to open or lengthen or stretch. It's not how it works, man. Like, I can't just train my lat. Like, it's impossible. I don't even want any machine that way I could just go like, 
I have to be holding on to something first. I have to bend my arm first. I have to drop my shoulder first. Whatever it is, I have to angle my elbow. So these people will show you this rigid shit. And this is high level, high level people. Like, do not buy into that bullshit. Like, you know as an individual that that feels weird. You know that more movement feels better. Yeah, your movement may be off and, we can, and people can correct that for you. But like, don't go to like, oh, rigid seems like the easiest, the path of least resistance for me because all I have to do is know where my spots are and then pull my arm. But then like years go by and workouts go by, hundreds of them and still nothing's happening. And then you run into an individual like me, you come and do back with me, you're like, which I have happened often and say, it's like I've never trained my back before. Well, it's not that you've never trained your back before, you've never allowed your back to move before and actually lift the weight. It's nothing to do with me. I don't have a magic touch where I touch you and oh, I feel my back. I'm like when they, the people go to church and they're like, God, God hit me and I can walk again, right? I'm just telling you like, it's okay to let your arm go up. It's okay, it'll come back and you can arch, you can arch even further and engage that back as soon as that arm gets out far enough, right? So there's no magic here. It's just breaking down these fucking horrible habits that who knows where they came from. No one can tell you where they came from. And if they came from, if they, if they literally came from someone looking at a textbook where the diagram is like literally like, it's like this and the guy's like this, and that's all it shows. It shows this and it shows this. And you've interpreted that as, we need that to be as quick as possible. Like yeah, that's yeah. what you're interpreting is textbook visuals, right? So this other, Another fucking issue I have with that. This will be quick. Individual and many people. We're using this bar too, which is like, we're already starting out in a hole. Why you would use this bar for tricep? I mean, you have that, I don't know. But, so, let's say we start here. I teach people, pull this thing in, rock over, tuck elbows down, shoulders back. My weight's on my lats and my elbows and my hands. So at no point am I, I'm always over my, nose could touch the cord. If I wanted, I stay back from it. Rock. Sway into motion, rock up. If you see anyone teach you like this, run run fast and run far. <laughs> and before you run fast and far, take a look at their arm and you'll see that it's like that. Tricep is down. There's no booty pump. There's no booty rump on that tricep. There's no hump. So if you think that this is good, Hit me up in the DMs and I'll fucking help you train your tricep. You're lost out in space. In low earth orbit, circling around like a little satellite. You still here? Yeah, so I saw a video the other week. It was, uh, it was actually, um, I forget the other guy's name on it, so I apologize for forgetting your name. But they're both smart dudes, John Jewett and his, the other guy does his podcast with him. Sorry, you forget your name, man. I'll get it in the credits. <laughs> we'll add it later. But he's got glasses, super smart dude. I think he has like no switch fitness is his thing or something like that, or switch fitness. Anyway, these guys were, John was talking about how, you know, he doesn't see a need. And I agree with him for the most part that a, a guy who's coming up in bodybuilding, like a beginner, an amateur, who's trying to like become something worthwhile to putting on stage like you don't need to really shouldn't really have a focus specific arm day because you're kind of that's another day you could be using to basically bolster your frame and like add put muscle on and train muscles and train bigger body parts where you need the you need the size you need to put on the weight right and I understood that I get that completely especially for for amateur level guys or lower level guys but to, to have that be a broad statement is kind of tough because it's like, at some point, those pieces that are lacking, with, and let's say for instance, it's your arms. Because for a lot of taller guys like myself, evening out the arm 
and bringing the arm up to the level of the body is a big issue. So a lot of big guys like who are bigger dudes, they're bigger all over. Arms might even look good standing still. As soon as the arm comes off the body and gets wide, it becomes stringy and long because the length of it shows and the distance from elbow to lat becomes so great that it almost looks like you have these like bean pole arms. You know what I mean? Like they just don't fit the body unless you got like abnormally short arms, right? So it's like, I understand that. And but I also have an issue with like this overarching thought that like to be a better bodybuilder, you just need to put on more size. That is true. But like, if we're not focusing on where the size is going on, so say we, say we just want to put on 15 pounds. We need to be 15 pounds heavier. Okay, well 15 pounds where if we could ideally put it? We want to put like five pounds in the lats, like, like five pounds in the shoulders, five pounds in the legs. If we can like arbitrarily pick how we do that, it's pretty hard. So we have to like go with what develops best and whatnot, right? But it's like, like I was saying before, the mass you need to put on Yes, you need to put on 15 pounds, but is it that you need to put on 50 pounds or is it that you just need to be a bigger presence, a bigger frame on stage? So if I fill in this gap that is now my arm that's too long and I fill out this, fill out this frame and I bring up, say, my lats, now I've created a visual look that's bigger than the previous look, but I haven't had to add exactly 15 pounds. So I don't need to be 250 on stage last year and be 265 this year and just I magically am better. So I understand where they're going with that and I do agree with it to an extent, but it's like, you have to focus from the beginning, especially once you're developing some muscle mass, which they're kind of not talking about. But once you have a structure, you have to understand how that structure needs to, we need to slap on the pieces of muscle. We need to put them on in the right spots. We don't want to overdevelop areas anymore because if you're overdeveloping already in legs and you're already developed in chest already, they're just going to keep developing and they're just going to keep overshadowing the, the lagging parts, right? So if my chest and my upper body and my back are great, my arms are lacking, yeah, I'm gonna have an arm day. I'm gonna train the shit out of my arms. And if I don't put on 15 pounds of muscle, but my arms got three inches bigger, I think that's a win, right? So just to make broad statements like that, it, it, I understand what they're saying and I get it because they're talking to amateurs, but like broad statements like that can be dangerous because it's like it's, bodybuilding is not about your weight on stage. It's not about that. The littlest guy in the show won the show on New York Pro last weekend littlest guy in the show yeah he didn't have to put on 15 pounds to do it so just understand it's not always when you get back to these discussions of weight you get you start slipping down that slope and start getting to people think it's all about weight and size and weight and this is like no it's about proportions development and getting things to pop off the body right so if someone has a shitty chest you got to train that chest man and we got to do it in different ways than we've been doing it we can't just hammer it with bench press heavy dumbbell presses. No, we gotta lower the weight, we gotta get the person developing so that that muscle starts to pop. So it starts to appear on stage and actually have some presence. So no, we don't need 15 pounds of muscle. If we put on 10 pounds over overall muscle, that's great, but to, put, to have the goal just be putting on weight, I don't know. I get it, but I don't get it. So. Just be, when, you, when guys and girls hear that, just be conscious and have like, play devil's advocate with it a little bit and just be like, well, you know, like, I understand that, yeah, but, you know what I mean, he went, he went on further in the description of the video in Instagram to explain what he meant and I totally understand what he said and I'm not arguing at all with him, the guy's a fucking genius, he's a great bodybuilder too, but I just worry that when these younger kids kind of see that, they'll watch the sound bite, kind of like they do with mine, and they'll just take the sound bite for what it's worth, right? So, I guess we all gotta be careful, but at the end of the day, I don't give a shit, so.